Welcome to Bible Over Brews News. Deep thoughts fermented over times and headlines. Wow. <laughs> new faces here in the crowd and a new headline. I you got it. <laughs> I am your host, Aaron Cruz Viverka with George. Yo. Gumby. Hey, what's happening? Keith. Howdy. And Edward. Hello. <laughs> and we're coming at you tonight. Talk about headlines. You guys bringing the heat on the last show. They are serious. They're bringing serious. <laughs> They're dead serious. They're dead we're, serious. We're just a bunch of ragamuffins, you know, Aaron brought in from church. <laughs> That's a bit of a He's just pulling everybody up the street for now. yourself. <laughs> High-powered ragamuffin. <laughs> we'll be sipping off of Evan Williams' honey bourbon. Now, Juice, why are we going uh, liquor today instead of beer? Well, it's a switch up. It's a different format, so it's a different idea. It's a different kind of drink. All right. Well, now, I'm ready to roll with it. I mean, times are changing. <laughs> Cheers. This, cheers. Cheers. The initial aroma is strong with citrus and a hint of whiskey. The palate again reveals lots of orange character and a moderate amount of honey. It has a rich Almost bourbon finish revealing. that plays on the tongue and ends with a final touch of honey, smooth and easy going. I never caught the orange until now, but like literally you said that and I actually caught the yeah. orange. You have to hear about it before you, like, start (laughs) tasting it. I drank this one beer every summer in Indianapolis, and then I read it had bubblegum notes to it. And I, ever since then, all I could taste was bubblegum, and I'm like, this is disgusting. When you learn about it, right? That's funny. You're like, I just can't put my finger on that taste. Uh, It's like I loved it before, but now it's the same beer. I hate it. Just, just to, to let everybody someone turn the phone on silent before I break it. Just to <laughs> let everybody know, we will we will be chasing it <laughs> with natural light natter days. Natter day, natter day, natter day, natter day, natter day. It's got pink flamingos on it. Oh wow. yeah, dude, this thing is fun. So you Listen, know, don't you know knock it's from it till Parma. you try it. You know it's from Parma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't knock it until you try it, guys. The Listen. church of natter day saints. <laughs> oh, 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 that was good. That was good. Ding, 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 ding. Where's that bell right now? Um, uh, yeah, I love it. Don't knock it until you try it, though, man. Yeah, so I'm not saying like I want to drink these every day, but listen, if it's summer and you're already drunk and you're hanging out with your back, you're hanging out with your buddies on your porch or by a beach, and someone throws you a natter day, you go, hell yeah, a natter day. That's hysterical. All right, and it's a good time. There could be a good time for a natter day. So all this, this before, is, all this before 9 a.m. in the morning. For yeah, <laughs> especially if you're. I drink diesel like cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I, I got the. I won't lie. So my neighbor, my neighbor John down the street. Thank you, John. He brought these for us to try on the show. Well, thank you, John. You're right. Oh, John. He brings lots of treats back because he drives a limo. And he mm. said, here, here's a whole bunch of this. Yeah, yeah, he's probably driving around like a bunch of like hot, like 22-year-old, like... Dude, he drives around like a, everybody. And they left those in the... Uh, yeah. So are we cracking these open? Yeah. Are we doing it now? Yeah. Right. That's your chaser. Natter natter That's your chaser. Natter day. <laughs> yep. natter day, natter day, natter day. Mm. <laughs> That's like a really bad summer shandy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. I mean, even when I read the tagline, like for those who like strawberry lemonade and drinking bad beer. Oh no, yeah. just was drinking beer, but maybe that was a Freudian slip. It was Ed Lee. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, did I say I could have swore it said bad? I've had some Capri Sun stronger than this. Man. What's going on? Oh, dude, you know I what? think there these things are cool. You guys need to lay off the Natter days, and they're just realize they're fun, man. Like they are fun when you when fun. you watch a movie. Movie does every like you don't have that guilty pleasure movie that's like you know it's not winning an Oscar, Princess but, Bride, right? And you never that's a talk, great movie. You dude. never talk about a that's a horrible movie. idea. It's a great movie. That's an <laughs> amazing it. movie. It is, but didn't win any awards. Did Wait, it? what movie? Princess Bride. Hmm. Yeah. Hold on. Which one is this? Well, where I she's just, a princess or where everyone's funny? Wait. Hold on. You've never seen Princess I can't, Bride? I'm, it's my top. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on my top guy out already. We just started of the show. all time. Wow. It's with the guy that does the T Rex voice. What? It's, it's with yes. Andre the Giant. Yes. Yes. He's yes. in it. Yes. Andre yes. the okay. Giant. No, he's right. He's right. Who's he's the guy that does a T Rex voice? I forget his name. But yes, he's right. I feel guilty. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? 
Oh, uh, no, from Toy Story. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, the guy oh, that died yes. by the poison. Yes. He's like, when the guy that switches the cups when he gets poisoned? Yes. Is that yes. him? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, never better the with the Sicilian oh. when death is on the line. Yeah. <laughs> he's also on the Incredibles. He's the boss, right? Yeah, isn't he the boss on the Incredibles at the insurance company? I think he is. I mean, yeah. that's just a fantastic he's piece of like the system. American <laughs> inconceivable cinema, man. Yeah, <laughs> his name is Wallace Shawn. That's there you great. go. That's he's a yes. fantastic yes. movie. Yes, is. That is an amazing movie, dude. Again, it's on my top ten list. <laughs> and not, it's kind of a perfect movie dude that's a really good movie for what it is it's not perfect. yeah perfect yes it is perfect it's got comedy it's got action it's got romance yeah it it's got, got sports Andre the Giant it's got Andre the Giant he did a good job I mean, come on it can't it can't be better than Andre yeah. the Giant R.A.P. brother <laughs> Andre Andre I think the gentle giant too. Right. That's the, uh, I can't remember, man. Uh, HBO did an low awesome. Uh, and... uh, HBO did an amazing documentary on him. It was really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Reading about his life and stuff like that. They talk about um, what's cool is they talk about him. Like they talk about his imperfections too. They kind of they do mention him. They dust it on their rug pretty good. Yeah. You know some of his infidelity and stuff like that. They kind of they make sure to mention it, but zip over it pretty quick. But still, just a, what an interesting life. Well, we uh, all like have I our did. things. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> they also did a good one on uh, Babe Ruth, too. So if you guys get a chance, man, some of those HBO documentaries are pretty good. Awesome. But uh, so, all right. Yeah. Well, Juicer, let's let's kick off this. Uh, we got news. some new faces. We got the new format. Let's rock and roll, man. Let's, right. get the, let's talk about these news stories. I can't so, wait to argue with you. This one, <laughs> <laughs> this one dates back to spring, okay? Um, there was a series of churches being desecrated across France. So... Let me smash into the news article here. So, France has seen a spat of attacks against Catholic churches since the start of the year. Vandalism that has included arson and desecration. Vandals have smashed statues, knocked down tabernacles, scattered or destroyed the Eucharist, and torn down crosses, sparking fears of a rise in anti-Catholic sentiment in the country. That Sunday, the historic church of St. Sulpice in Paris was set on fire just after midday mass on Sunday. Le Parisien reported, although no one was injured, police are still investigating the attack, which firefighters have confidently attributed to arson. Built in the 17th century, St. Sulpice houses three works by romantic painter Eugene de la Croix and was seen in the movie adaptation of The Da Vinci Code. By Dan Brown. Last month in February, I'm sorry, this is back in February, at the St. Nicholas Catholic Church in Huli, I think, in north central France, a statue of the Virgin Mary was found smashed and the altar cross had been thrown on the ground, according to La Croix International, a Catholic publication. Also in February, at St. Alain Cathedral in Lavoir in South central France. An altar cloth was burned and crosses and statues of saints were smashed. The attack prompted Lavior Mayor Bernard Kenyon to say in a statement, God will forgive not me. Ooh. Dang. And in the southern city of Nimes, near the Spanish border, vandals looted the altar of the church of Notre Dame de Enfante, which is Our Lady of the Children, and smeared a cross with human excrement. Mm. Consecrated hosts made from unleavened bread, which Catholics believe to be the body of Jesus Christ, were taken and found scattered among rubbish outside the building. Bishop Robert Wedelbird of Nimes said in a statement, This greatly affects our diocesan community. The sign of the cross and the blessed sacraments have been the subject of serious injurious actions. This act of, prof uh, of profanation hurts us all in our deepest convictions, he added. According to the tablet, which reported that in February alone there have been a record 47 documented attacks on churches and religious sites. 
Hmm. The Vienna-based Observatory of Intolerance and Discrimination Against Christians in Europe, which was founded in cooperation with the Council of European Bishops Conferences, but is now independent, said there have been a 25% increase in attacks on Catholic churches in the first two months of the year compared with the same last year. Wow. Its executive director, Ellen Fantini, told Newsweek that while in many cases the motive for the attack was not known, France faced growing problems with anti-Christian violence, especially by anarchist and feminist groups. I think there is a rising hostility in France against the church and its symbols, quote-unquote, but, quote, it seems to be more against Christianity and the symbols of Christianity. These attacks on symbols that are really sacred to parishioners, to Catholics, desecration of consecrated hosts is a very personal attack on Catholicism and Christianity, more than spray painting a slogan on the outside wall of a church building, unquote. George, you had a, a comment? I was kind of giving you an outside code for, hey, wrap it up, we got the point. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to be like, hey, we're good, we're good, we got it, we got it. But, uh, hey, you know what? You read the whole article, so we get, you know, nothing's left out. But um, Oh, I didn't read the whole article. <laughs> oh, good. Thank God. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. what. So, is it, so you obviously found this interesting because you just recently uh, converted to Catholicism, what, a year ago? About a year ago, right? About a year ago or so? Ish, yeah. And so, uh, did they ever like do any investigations? Did anything happen further? Did they know who's doing the attacks? Um, is there just like a growing anti-religious, anti-Catholic movement in France? Like, what's going on? Yes. So, it has been. There has been a growing anti-religious, especially an anti-Catholic movement against France or in France. Is rather. it anti-religious then? It's anti-religious, especially, or is it anti-Catholic? Okay, I'm just wondering if it's because strictly. I'm just wondering: is it a growing anti-religion atheist movement, or is it a, is it a? Uh, are we talking like particularly Catholicism hatred? It's been particular to Catholicism. All right, because I'm just wondering, like, yeah, if there if there's a growing uh, movement of, you know, atheism and anti-religion, and just I'm sure Catholicism must have a stronghold on the influence out there, I would imagine that would be a site of attack. Not that it's good. I would never recommend that or encourage that. Yeah, I think we can all agree, like, regardless of if we, what our religion is or if we don't have one, that this is wrong. Oh, like, yeah. Um, attacking personal property is wrong and, um, you know, damaging anything. I think, so th there's something we have all in common we can agree on. To take it a step further, um, for Catholics who hold these things so sacred, um, they, it's, it's even it's even worse. Um, and I'm of the opinion, as I'm sitting here watching this and watching George give the wrap it up sign, <laughs> um, I'm thinking, you don't go attacking what you don't care about. Like... If I'm a person that's outside of the church, and I think that's just a ho bunch of hocus pocus, like BS, um, I'm gonna like let it be because I'm I'm not gonna like waste my time attacking something that I'm. If I'm attacking something, I'm giving it my credibility. Sure, you right. know what I'm saying. I'm saying it's wor worthy of my time. It's worthy of my attack. It's a good point. You know, yeah. very good. So that's what I. I have. agree with you. No, it's a good stance. Yeah. That's insightful. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I want to beat you up and argue with you, but I have nothing to, <laughs> I have nothing to add. Profound, really. I still feel like um, this might be my a deficiency in my Catholicism, but um, my mathematical statistician self, he, like everything in there could be completely true, and obviously one church desecration is one too many. Um, but the fact that we have still we have no idea as of the printing of the article or, you know, you know, even mm -hmm. just doing a casual Google search, I can't find any real follow up on it. Like there wasn't one. And you know, they bring up what 47 per month and a 25% increase. I think those two numbers are from two different sources, but you're talking about a number like 47. Yes. Like no, that no. could be a rounding error. No, no. Uh, so that number was a 25% increase. The 47 was a 25% yes. increase. Yes. So yeah. the original number was still a very small number. Uh, so I'm not saying there wasn't more than what they recorded. Obviously there was more, but I wonder if an article like this 
blows out of proportion what the actual trend is, especially not given any further trend line. Like it could be like, you know, our, our, you know, the murder numbers in Cleveland and obviously similarly, any one murder is one murder too many. And I hope anybody's opinion, <clears throat> they can, you know, go from say, I don't know, I'm just making up numbers like hundred to 120 to 85 to whatever. And they can be, you know, locally, you know, uh, you know, in February, a bunch of people got murdered compared to February last year and murders were up 500% in February just because maybe there just happened to be one kind of set of circumstances. When you're talking about a number as small as 100 or 120, the individual circumstances can really affect when you take the sample in the statistics. I'm sorry, that sounds really mathematical. But what I'm saying is small sample sizes can yield large variations, which also sounds mathematical, without there necessarily being a big difference in what's actually happening long term. I see what you're saying, but at the same time, it was just after this that the fire of Notre Dame happened. Right. And it's 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 a hugely symbolic. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of Did a we conclude cr- that was arson or was that an accident? Oh, that was, I think it was an accident. I thought well, it was an accident. I thought it was electrical. They're claiming, but at the same time, you have all these things happening concluding with that. So I ha- I actually have a hard time believing it was an accident. Juice also loves conspiracy theories. He does. <laughs> not really. Not really. I, de- I debunk most of them. Juice, you love conspiracy theories. I love debunking them. You think 9-11 was a fix? No. Yes, I- you do! <laughs> I believe that 9-11 was an inside job, but not by the government. You, whatever, you don't think, you think it's a conspiracy theory. You think it's not what is projected. I you believe, don't think it was planned. I believe there was somebody on the inside. I do not believe the government did. I just don't have a rap on your argument record. You're like, you just said no, but you're like... <laughs> but you gave your own conspiracy theory about what happened just now. But are conspiracy theories bad? No, not at all. Because MK Ultra was no, proven to be a real thing, thing, right? Two, so. two, two to three people can conspire to do a bad thing. Yeah, that's why there's laws against it. Right. Yeah. If but. conspiracy wasn't real, there wouldn't be laws against it. I find it interesting that we were shown so much footage of Notre Dame burning mm-hmm. for so long. You know. If it wasn't that big of a deal, if it was just an accident, we sure got a lot of coverage for it. Yeah, well, we got a lot of coverage because it's a historical place that exactly. you yeah, know, no a one's going to build like that anymore yeah. in this, the age of particle board. Yeah. Um, no yeah, one builds like that anymore. You're not going to get those beautiful anymore. gargoyles outside. You no know, one's going to pay extra money for that's, that. that. It's history. Well, gargoyles are okay. Those timbers that were in the attic, were those started growing in like the 6th or 7th century. Oh, yeah. Something crazy like that. Wow. We're never going to have anything I mean, like that again. The roof again. itself, so the roof itself that's was why called it was so the forest, devastating. Right? Right. Yeah. Because it, it, they say they grew it, 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 it a it, forest just for that. Yes. Yeah. So let's say just half of that number was right. Let's say or a third. Well, if it was a half, that would actually mean that church desecrations were going down, and that the general populace was populace was more reverent, right? So, uh, whatever <laughs> whatever the number we we designate, I love say, the math, man. <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on, but he seems like he's making a good point. So I'm like, all right, get it, get it's, a math, man. Let me get a chalkboard out here. <laughs> yeah, can we, can we at least say that it George was is confused, deliberate against the Catholic Church? I think it's. I think it's plain. I mean, plain I I could that see the that. Church. Why not? Um, <laughs> and I the think Catholic if Church you, of em- enemies, of course, the I you know the truth has enemies, oh, and absolutely. that's falsehoods. Um, and I'm not trying to you know. No. Um, well, it, but but I think if you believe that we live in a spiritual world, and there are things that we don't know that are at play. I think there's a sign of like spiritual warfare going on here. I Why agree. are there so many attacks? And like I said early, earlier, you like you hear about these um, people who like go in and will steal a will steal the Eucharist out of the Catholic Church and go home and like Which have a black up. mass and desecrate it. Like oh, either you're mass. insane because like either you don't either you don't believe in it and you're insane because why would you like be there doing that like wasting your time or like you actually think it has maybe some credibility right exactly yeah, yeah what's a black mass i want one satanic yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to answer Gumby's question real quick, my, my opinion would be, as I wouldn't know if it for sure if it was targeting Catholics, unless I also know knew the levels of non-Catholic church prosecu- persecution well, in the same period. That would be good to know. Or even mosque, you know, how right, many mosque desca- be, well, desecrations no, have there been? That was, yeah. and I didn't bring up in this article, but that was one of the consistencies, was that it was particular to the Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. Mosque attacks didn't go up. Uh, Protestant branches, yeah. theirs didn't go up, but the Catholic branches did go up. Well, the the number of Protestant churches over there doesn't even compare to here in the U.S. Right. <laughs> it's true. So, but let's take the name Catholic out of it. What what if they view that as the legitimate church? Does the church itself have an enemy? Right. Right. Well, so I if mean, you view you, that as if you believe in good and evil, yes. There is an enemy. As and there are one. people who hold that eneminess. Yeah, and to your point, the, if, if you thought that that church actually had authority and actually had impact and actually had influence, yeah, wouldn't it be something worthy of attacking? You know what's funny mm-hmm. is this is going to coincide with your article. I don't even know what my article is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it, you. It yeah, actually yeah. coincides perfectly with that. Okay. Yeah. Back to the Black Mass thing. <laughs> um, what are the chances of us getting a uh, Satanist on the show? That would be so cool. Why not? Oh, I mean, my gosh. Bring it, them it would on. Be very, okay. Satanist so, and so an exorcist. If oh, I, Lord. That'd be great, dude. That'd be scary. Get an exorcist if you guys. Yeah. I don't think they would meet. Yoga flame. I, I mean, would. I just, I, I don't I think they would. Listen, I don't, I would take them separately. I think that's both great ideas. Yeah. I just want to learn what a Satanist is about. Yeah. I think we should just bring Father Brown on. They'd probably have <laughs> I don't know if I could be They'd rude to Father have Brown. They'd probably a beer together and be cool. Uh, I, I mean, I yeah. That sparked my interest. Yeah. So what I think what interests me most about your article, though, Aaron, is, is the lack of follow-up. Yeah. The lack of further well, attention to it. I mean, and to be honest, I believe the reason why there was a lack of follow up was because right after this, Notre Dame. Well, let's be, and, and let's be honest too. If this was another sexual sexual abuse scandal within the Catholic <laughs> Church, wouldn't the news be all over it? Over and over mm-hmm. and over. They would yeah. be all over it. They would be so death. quick to throw the Catholic Church under the bus. Yeah. But, I, th- uh, I thought of a kind of an example of like how like maybe illustrating where the lack of follow-up kind of hurts. Like, I feel like this is a responsible article to have in, like, local French news. Like, okay, there's been church vandalisms in our country recently. You know, it's almost like reporting, you know, and the plane dealer or, you know, on on next door that, you know, people have been stealing garden gnomes, that kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, church desecrations are much more serious. But I'm saying it's locally relevant in the you moment. You haven't seen my garden gnomes. <laughs> there you go. But... I feel like it's kind of irresponsible to elevate it directly to worldwide news without more of the background, without understanding the trend longer than a couple months. I mean, yeah. when you talk about 25% where 47 is a high number, that could just be one guy with an ax to grind driving around to a bunch of churches. Because um, I and, and one possible example of this is the third search result down on this article was a Snopes article about right after Notre Dame, uh, people distributing a map showing all these church desecrations all over France that wasn't actually a map of church desecrations. So what people do when they're not local to this news is they start yeah. scapegoating people. I, like, it's really easy to say, oh, that was the Muslims. I, because I, there are more Muslims so than you speak. I do get what you're saying. But the thing is, is that the article does chronicle, and it, I'm not going to read it, 47 of them that did happen, which was a 25% increase. Right, right 47 and, over two months. And it does go through and talk about the veracity of the crimes, which had also increased. It was no longer just somebody spray painting on the surface. They were literally knocking down statues and taking the altars out of the churches and, and crushing them. So it's it's no longer something as simple. So it's not simply just the fact that there was an increase of the attacks on the church, it was the increase of the veracity of the attacks on the church as well. You know, the, the crimes themselves got worse. It's probably too much for so, me to expect out of, like, and, you know, the news article yeah. to do this, but I would but I would on, die for the spreadsheet. Like, but how on many, top of that, 
How many uh, arsons versus knocking down statues yeah. in month to month? Yeah. Which, what about the well, extra man on the crucifix? <laughs> on top of that, right? right. Well, I mean, was well, that their own extra man? Was it someone else's crazy. extra man? crazy. Like, I have a lot of questions about well, there's that. There's no, you just, there's no DNA I there. know. There was no follow-up. I'm like, there's well, no. you don't just pass that by. There was Someone rubbed extra man on a cross. There's no DNA in this. I have I'm questions. <laughs> Is it really not? No. Wow. What? I have no idea. Yeah, so no, like no, back, no, to, no back to you can't my identify point, really. Which... So if I like if I killed somebody and I just took a dump on the floor as my call, there's like no my DNA, my no. sign, like the that's there's DNA detail. and blood. So there's so there's DNA and body I know, fluid. But, like, instead there's of no leaving DNA like a Joker card, extra. like I take a dump, yeah. like they could not find out who it was. No. <laughs> I I think they would. Um, I think they would. Yeah, yeah, they totally would. Back to my point, like, and it's not something that they would really, (laughs) like, seriously, this is not something they would really, like, (laughs) take legitimate in the news, is that, like, there's a spiritual component to this. Um, That's a lot of work to push over a statue. Like, I got some lower back issues. I wouldn't push over a statue if if I wasn't really riled up about it. You know what I'm saying? Like pushing over a statue and putting your excrement on things. You've got to be really riled up or really like messed up. So So what is getting your goat? So let me let me. So let's substitute (laughs) the Catholic Church here. And let's say those are each Jewish synagogues. Oh, man, we all the place. Would, Would it receive the same attention? Well, there was a Jewish synagogue attack a. recently in Pennsylvania. A. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking no, about, no, I'm talking about in France. 47. <laughs> I'm just right. saying. The, in this one, people were all people were murdered. Yeah. You know? um, and it received big news. It and did. right after that, I heard on right. Catholic radio that um, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism is up in the United States. Yeah. I'm so, saying, what are the chances of us knowing it more about that? Versus the Catholic Church in Europe. Yeah. We yeah, hear I, about I, it I, I a lot know. more probably. Back, back to Gumby's point, like he pointed out, if we're talking about, you know, you know, a boy that got that got molested, well, that's going to be playing in the news for the next six to f- ten months, right? Six to ten months, easy. But the fact that a church got violated, that's going to make the news for a day. Yeah. Probably a consistent theme in all this. I, I'm, I couldn't pull up any particular articles on this, but what we get actually reported that happens abroad, like news, obviously for news for us is very U.S. centric. Even news abroad is rather U.S. centric. I mean, a lot more people know about, you know, the president of the United States than we know about the president of anywhere else. But if you were to actually look into the actual scale of bad stuff happening abroad that probably should be reported here, if the news was consistent with what they hear about us, like it would blow our minds. I mean, we're talking, you know, religious persecution, um, uh, you know, genocide. You know, there's right. there's genocide that doesn't get reported to us. At oh, all. yeah, right. Well, absolutely. So, so we're just in general, regardless of how much this article represents, you know, what information we're missing. There's so much information we're missing. Oh no, I, I agree. It's interesting. I agree. fully agree with that. I feel like there could be yeah. more more information, yeah. more follow up. Yeah, and... it's just one article though. Yeah, no. and, and to 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 parlay that a little bit, there was articles for this. I I I cut it down for the sake of time because there was American articles that corroborated that even here in America they were feeling the replicate uh, the. <laughs> I can't say it. Repercussions. Repercussions. Thank yes. you. The repercussions of the same violence here in the United States, especially in New York. New York actually had a lot of violence against their cathedrals. So, mm. and it happened the same time as the ones in France. What well, does the Catholic Church need any more bad press here? No, they don't. <laughs> they really don't. No. And I hate to say that because I feel like the Catholic Church has, you know, been. I'm not saying that they're perfect. But they have been thrown under the bus a lot. Mm-hmm. Almost Especially as much. when you look at like levels of abuse in other organizations exactly, exactly, or like yeah. schools on the state level. Like it's 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 a, a bigger percentage yeah. that doesn't get talked about. Yeah, right. Yeah, I agree. I I would not argue that. I'm just saying. So it it probably isn't. It wasn't that important to. All right. So the Notre Dame is being burning here. It's. 
I mean, we did get some coverage. I, I think I we were like, it burn. I, yeah, I think it was I mean, like was everyone was movie, collectively right? everyone mourning up. the loss of some historic artifact. Movie, I bet there'd be a third of the coverage in order to <laughs> 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 Because to be honest, like, we're we're not about the buildings we're in. You Absolutely. know, we're not about the buildings. So it wasn't, I, I don't think people were mourning it as like, oh my gosh, Notre Dame, a Catholic cathedral. They were like, oh my gosh, Notre Dame, something that was built way back in the day that will never be, you know. Yeah, to me it's still, there was a, because I, I, I got the opportunity to visit it, and it just had this beautiful aura of being this, you know, amazingly historic building. It's just mm. old and this mm-hmm. amazing structure, and it was sad to see it go, just in that terms of coming from someone who's not. But it's not gone. It's not gone. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I know Macron is pretty, Macron, Macron, Macron yeah. he's pretty, like, uh, ambitious about the plan. They want to do it in five years. Uh, but I don't think, it, unless they're going to break out the plywood, I don't think they're going to get it done. Did you see one of those plans? One of those plans was to try to build, and thankfully they dismissed it. I think I remember, I think I know where you're going. For the spires? No, they they wanted to put a swimming pool on top of it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, they had a contest for architects to like submit plans for the spires. And some of them were like really hideous, like modern. Yeah. Yeah. One of the architects wanted to build a giant swimming pool on top for tourists. Yeah, architects aren't. You can can knock out a lot of baptisms at once. Ah. Bingo. (laughs) Architects aren't always the most practical. They're more concerned (laughs) with being like 50 bucks a head, man. People will be swimming in that. (laughs) Oh <laughs> okay, so George might be on to something. There we go. <laughs> I'm saying I know where he's going. So, all right, all right. Interesting article there, Aaron. You're welcome. All right, babe. Thank so you. But not as interesting as Gumby's. Although, I, I want to say this real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Believe it or not, it was some of the earlier mm-hmm. conversations that Gumby and I had that started leading to my conversion to the Catholic Church. <laughs> Gumby, what have oh, you welcome. done? You're horrible. Just got to remind me about that. <laughs> so you and I have been talking about all of the attacks, and okay. th- and this is back when I was I was still looking at the at the traditional church, but I was looking at the Orthodox side. Mm. But you and I looking at at different attacks on the Catholic Church yes. in media, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we both agreed they must be doing something right. Because, I agree to, to his point. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't attack something that you felt was a legitimate threat against you. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, no, and, and the church, if we look at scripture, mm-hmm. no matter from what denomination or what angle, it had a historical enemy. Right. That wanted to make sure that, let's see if I word this correctly, that the kingship of Christ was taken out. Mm-hmm. Again, so I asked the question, does the church have a legitimate enemy? Yes, and, they did. Yeah. <laughs> and still do. You still do. Which leads us to Gumby's article. All right. <laughs> Which one Send is it. That? Send the heat, Gumby. <laughs> is this it? That's it. What's it called? What's the name of the article again? The name of the article is American Exorcist. Ooh, Ooh, dude, Exorcist. I would love to get yeah. an exorcist, exorcist in here. That'd be sweet. So before, so before I read about it, because I think it's pretty long. The the whole, I, I guess, in a nutshell, the whole uh, point of what it was getting to, and there's other articles about it too, was that I found it interesting that um, here in America that the medical psychiatric community, not all of it, but a part of it, was turning to the Catholic Church for exorcism. A secular, I'll say it again, a secular American medical community was turning to the Catholic Church for exorcism. Okay? I just watched The Conjuring, so I know. You heard that correctly. Okay. After they do their analysis. Uh, After, like, I don't know what else to do. Right. Right. Like I, that's awesome though. All right, <laughs> so it, and, and I only I only wanted to preface it with that because at the beginning kind of sets up for a while, so I don't even know if you could find a point where. <sighs> oh sure, I could shoot that. Um, right now, let's see. Probably about. I didn't even read it yet, but there we go. I think right. Maybe I should. Bam! Right there. Try right there. 
So the beginning part of it was about a lady who was needing some experiencing help. medical problems mentally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is kind of in the middle of it. We will link these things, right? Yes, they will all be linked inside the slideshows. Okay. Harp and never, but you it. have to subscribe to the newsletter. Go yes, ahead. and I believe Harp uh, was uh, not religious, right? She was from the medical practitioner. Yeah. Harp had never seen this kind of behavior before and wasn't sure what to do, but she knew that Louisa had occasionally experienced episodes in which she felt something indescribably dark overtake her and that she would read scripture to beat back these states. You need to read Bible verses, Harp said, her bearing still frantic. Louisa picked up her smartphone and began looking up passages. Louisa was the lady who needed help, who had felt that she was oppressed. And uh, as she as she read, she started to calm down. Her flailing diminished, her frenzy effect a bed. She vomited into the trash bin, and after that, she was her old self again, full of apologies. Her eyes were wet, her face red. The encounter left Hart baffled about what she just witnessed. For Louisa, it had been more of a profound effect, prompting a search for answers that would ultimately lead her away from modern medicine. It's well worth its well-worn paths for mental health treatment and toward the older, more ritualized remedies of her Catholic faith. So the convictions that demons ex- exist and that they exist to harass, derange, and smite human beings stretches back as far as religion itself. In ancient Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Babylonian priests perform exorcisms by casting wax figurines of demons into a fire. The Hindu Vedas, thought to have been written between 1500 and 500 BC, refer to supernatural beings known as Asuras, but largely understood today as demons that challenge the gods and sabotage human affairs. For the ancient Greeks, too, the demon-like creatures lurked on the shadowy fringes of the human world. But far from being confined to the past of demagogies and evil eyes, belief in demonic possession is widespread in the USA today. Polls conducted in recent decades by Gallup and the data from YouGov suggest that roughly half of Americans believe demonic possession is real. Suggest that roughly half of Americans believe that demonic possession is real. Yep. Half? Holy shit. The percentage... Who believe in the devil is even higher, and in fact, it has been growing. Gallup polls showed that the number rose from 55% in 1990 to 70% in 2007. Now, listen to what he said. It rose. It didn't go down. It rose. So I'll just read the next article, and this should be enough for us to chew on. Perhaps as a result, demand for exorcisms, the Catholic Church's antidote to demonic possessions, seems to be growing as well. Though the church does not keep official statistics, the exorcists I interviewed for this article attest to the fielding more pleas for help every year. And then it goes on to talk about uh, Vincent Lampert. May the um, power of Christ compel you. May the power of Christ compel you. So, it's not quite that simple, but... <laughs> I've, I've seen it. I've seen exorcisms on TV, too. So don't tell me like I'm I don't know. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I Hollywood. actually, when I I used to live in Indianapolis, and I saw uh, Father Vincent Lampert really? give us a uh, talk, um, and exorcists don't normally talk, uh, mm-hmm. give talks. Right, right. They're normally... Every diocese has one, mm-hmm. and usually... Um, the identity of who it is is per- kept pretty under wraps, right. so it's not common for them to go out and give talks, um, because everyone and their brother calls thinking that they're possessed, right. when in actuality, like maybe out of a few thousand that would call them, there could be potentially one. Yeah, think- they're very stringent about who they would actually go through that process with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, I have to... Um, as much as as cool as I think exorcisms are and stuff like that, I have to, uh, um, and just being the atheist and being the antagonist on the show, I do, I have to, right. I feel right to kind of, you know, they don't keep good statistics on it. They kind of keep things hidden. My mm-hmm. alarm is, yeah, like no, I, no, yeah. I, and I, I would agree with you, you would. and you're probably right for most of the cases that claim that they're possessed. Right. But what if you were medically trained to do psychiatric work and you would run out of all options 
and you turn to them and it actually helps. I just think that's awesome. I think that's so cool. I think that's funny. Like, and but, um, to be which honest, point to and I've, yeah. I've actually been reading a lot of stuff on exorcism just because of stuff like this coming up and believe it or not, exorcist always turn you away. They tell you as soon as you come to them, they say, okay, well, I need to go talk to this psychoanalyst. And they come back, well, they said to come back to you. All right, now I need to go talk to this doctor. Mm -hmm. They will turn them away to every medical professional first. And it's only after all the medical professionals turn them away that they will then see them. Yeah. Hmm. And this this lady's story, the whole article was it was just it it was like a like a knife in my stomach reading her whole story and, and, and seeing the context of her whole life that you know, she had sought so much help. Um outside of the church you know it was i'm not saying true or not true yeah. if possession is a thing though like if it's the devil trying to possess or a demon trying to like what's the overall arching goal besides just what do they just like i want to possess them and just make them friggin' crazy souls what are they gonna do with your soul well so they did it just make you act soul crazy? has a monetary value in the spirit realm I would say it's less about what we would probably consider the devil, at least, it, you know, from my evangelical background. It has more to do with lies and, de and deception about yourself mm -hmm. and layers of that being peeled off. And as each layer is peeled off, a new reality about yourself that wants to resist those lies won't. And so your inner soul is doing this. That's really good. I like that. Yeah. So I, I I think it has more to do with deception and lies about yourself, the spiritual world, and, and possession. So what you're feeling the lies of your personal self, or well, I'm confused. I'm trying to read your. Definition. So imagine everything that you believed about yourself. Imagine that uh, you know, let's say as a child, and most a lot of the people who need, uh, you know, this kind of work suffer with abuse as little children in any way, whether it's sexual All or times. physical or emotional, you know, and stuff that they can't be, that can't be reconciled and hasn't been reconciled, um, in a healthy way along the way. Imagine that happened as a child there, you know, three years old, you're abused in whatever way. Okay. And over the lie and over the years, you, you have to deal with these lies that you tell yourself, well, maybe it was my fault. Maybe I deserve that. You know, and, and you begin building on that foundation through your whole life and then building up systems to to confirm that and and then your whole world is just built upon that that moment this is what i'm viewing is like and uh, maybe for an exorcist in the catholic church they may have, i may be totally off i don't know but it seems like a lot of the work that they need to do is, is that kind of work peeling back those things and after like if you think of an Sounds onion like therapy right well and it is actually pretty a, it a pretty boring thing like one thing that father lampert was really trying to drill into everyone's head uh when i heard him give the talk is like this is not as glamorous as it's made out to be nope. in movies See, dang it. and i'm not trying to like spark your curiosity because there's a lot of like mystique and mysterious oh we're gonna talk about exorcisms wow yeah. like um people get like oh yeah um now i'm listening it's a Hollywood but it's like version. it's yeah. not as exciting it's no. actually it's it's very infrequent the the things that they go through are very like if they try to make a movie out of it, yeah, it would be boring. Yeah, I think it was no Father, head spinning um, or anything like that. I think it was know? Father Amert who said God, that awesome. out of like eight thousand cases, they would do like fifty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like most of the people, like they would come to him and they would say, "Yeah, you need to go talk to uh, you know a therapist," right? You know, and it it was. Seriously, it was like like a minute amount that they would accept. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, less yeah. than less than ten percent. But you know, I, I'm thinking we're, the article going back to like there's a rise in the need for exorcisms, and why is that? Especially in America, like mm. I think a Mother Teresa who said like, you know, she's from like she worked in Calcutta. It's a, a, a like people are destitute. Mm. But she said, we're the ones here 
or spiritually poor. Yes. You know? I agree And I with feel that. like that's why, like, we don't talk to each other. We don't communicate to each, with each other. We don't, like, there's so many things where we're, like, standoffish and we're just, we are spiritually poor here. I agree. You know? I agree. And I think <laughs> that a demonic force exploits that. That we're, we're, you know, as life is like continually getting, technology is getting more and more and it's supposed to save us time. We're actually getting busier and busier. We're less connected with people. People in our own homes, we're ignoring people. The family's being split apart by technology. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't realize it, they're all like going off and doing their separate things. No one talks to each other anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's just like isolation. You hear, they say... Um, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. People have idle minds now. Oh, they're yeah. not filling Big it time. with anything like substantial. You know, they're just we're passive consumers of like entertainment. You know. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. Well, I I fully concur. And and I so here's how I liken that because if you talk to the older parts of the world where they still have tribes, right? The older parts of the world. They'll tell you how they're attacked by spirits and demons. But you get here to the West, virtually nobody's attacked. Why? The devil because just walks right in. It's, it's, and we say, come on. It's seduction. <laughs> it's seduction. It's the difference between... We pay for it. Somebody, <laughs> right, right. It's the difference <laughs> between somebody, somebody, you know, raping you and somebody giving you a roofie, right? It's, it, it's, it's a big difference. I don't know well, hold on, hold on. It's <laughs> don't e- know if I got either it way. Well, either way, it's rape. Okay, but what I'm saying is this one is blatantly violent, whereas the other one you may not even remember because it was it was so. Well, seductive. the other one would be us accepting it, and and yeah. it would be without even a sign, like without even noticing. You yeah. know, they say right. like the devil, yeah. well, his greatest achievement is metaphor. All right, not yeah. having people realize he exists. I'm trying to go George on this. One. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not well, totally following up. And he wouldn't even subscribe to that because he would yeah. would not even give credence to the idea of the, the devil existing, right? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So for you, this whole conversation is like stupid. So, and it doesn't make sense. And I we, understand that the whole yeah. time well, we're talking why, about I mean, this. I started off saying, you know, my personal <laughs> alarm is going off. As much, listen, and again, as much as I love movies and stuff for that, I wish there was crazy stories and... You know, crazy recordings and whatnot of people going nuts and a priest solving it. But yeah. but as an atheist, and you say, I wish there was something like that. Why do you wish there was something like that? I think well, because it might give you some sense of belief in something. You know, else. I think just I'm just talking out of excitement and entertainment. I don't think it's anything spiritual. Like, but if you say, saw some, if you experienced something, oh, listen, it would open up your I, world. I welcome God to. Yeah. Prove to me that he's real, but everything like when people talk to me why they believe in God, it just doesn't, it doesn't dial up. I'm I'm wait I'm waiting for that like. But can you God least... tell me you're real? Lift up this. If you're asking, of so if th- you're asking God and feed me to one, and like if a pickle show came you out he's of here, real, like, and I'd be like, well, <laughs> all right, you, guys, I'm on your side now. You may I'd not be like, a true atheist. What's it? You may not be a true atheist. Uh, I you actually, may be you know, I, I, I can't, I'm more agnostic. Yeah, I, I yeah. mentioned that before. I think I just say atheist because it's easy to roll off the tongue. I'm more so agnostic. Okay, I, I'm so not that's against a the step. spiritual realm. We just knocked a little chunk. <laughs> Not a little <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think when I first started, I you know I claim I claim to be an agnostic. I think, okay, I, I think I'm just rolling with the show, man. Yeah. But you believe in the spiritual. You know, I you mean, believe I believe in spiritual moments. I've, I, you know what? I've had spiritual moments. I believe. I think I have. But uh, again, it's just a matter of um, n- nothing. I can put my finger on, and I just feel like a lot of people's confidence. Yeah, I don't. Th- so here's question. the thing, George. I don't think we're ever going to be able to put our finger on anything. I think faith is blind. So oh, I'm I never going to be. Oh. Yeah, I know. I hate. I actually hate it too. And I like as a Catholic, I struggle all the time. Um, I say I, I would be Catholic or I wouldn't be anything else. Um, but I struggle all the time. I hate that. Like, oh, it's it's blind faith. Yeah, that to me, like I, I want something that's like concrete in your face. Just show it to me. Um, but you that's a, never gonna happen. You haven't yeah. listened to our Marian apparitions episode yet, have you? No, I have not. Oh, okay, because that's pretty concrete. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
it, no, it, it probably isn't. I, well, I, it was a show I missed, and Juice thinks he brought like he hard scientific it. evidence. He missed it on he purpose. Did. No, I didn't. <laughs> so let's. I, it, I'm ready to I mean, have it right now. Bring up your show, best point. But I know about Mary even if Alfred. I think of the story of creation, right, with Adam and Eve. Let's let's mm-hmm. take off religious filters right. and look okay. at it from a different point of view. Maybe if we can, from a spiritual point of view. Like, because you don't believe in Satan, so you don't believe he actually came into the garden. You don't believe in any of it. Right. But so, I don't from a talking s- snakes symbolic, uh, let's just take it from a symbolic story for what okay. it is. It was deception and, and, and led them to believe lies about who they were, right? Mm-hmm. And it's still stupid that there's a uh, bad apple so what I'm saying is to begin with like why even put I the agree. bad apple I agree but what if it was not viewed through those through those lens and just just okay let me just she let, was just humor led you. to believe that she Glasses. something that wasn't about herself and and he was just a weak man but but um can you at least relate to maybe something you thought about yourself that isn't true, but you still struggle with like, man, I, I know that's not true about myself, but sometimes I feel that way. Something that like you guys believe to be true about me. No, no, you, that you believe or have struggled with to be true about yourself that you know, isn't, or, you know, that's, that's what I view the spiritual realm as. And, and like the enemy is, Hmm lies about you believing things that that aren't true maybe necessarily. right uh, i don't know yeah no of course the yeah, the devil wants you to believe lies about yourself you're like you're a great person you're created in his image and likeness you're a child of god Her image. but like god would have you believe like i'm a piece of garbage I'm going to do drugs uh, <laughs> or whatever, or whatever or, whatever, yeah. whatever your thing well, i'm not is. measuring up yeah, to what society I'm, says i should be you know, or, or those kind of things. Those those are the, the kind of things that ultimately I think they get layered, 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 mm-hmm. and layered, and layered upon itself. That eventually, if, if your whole life is built on that, I could totally see why somebody would want to see an, a therapist or a psychiatrist or an exorcist if one of the two don't work. Or yeah. even if they start off with an exorcist and they end up at a psychiatrist. One of my business yeah. professors in college, his name was Param. He was like oh, the I funniest. You know Param? I had Param too. Oh, nice. His, his seminar, he, Why Life Sucks, it's literally called Why Life Sucks. Right. It's he awesome. would do things like, I like, Why that, life I like sucks, that seminar already. already. He was the funniest person ever. And in his accent, like when he would cuss, it would just be great. But um, he like had this little narrative about we're a little rock and we're rolling. We're rolling and we're rolling and we're picking up for lack of a better term, we're picking up and then we're picking up more and more and more and little other little pebbles and we're picking up and that stuff hardens and we're picking up more. And and that's what we think we are now, mm-hmm. but we're still, we are that, we're that little rock. The other stuff is just something that the world gave us through all of our experiences. We're still that rock. We think we're this other thing that has built up into this mass of garbage, right? but we're just the little rock. You know, we picked up a lot of crap along the way. I like where mm-hmm. you're getting at. And yeah. I feel, and Gummy, I'm glad you, thanks for trying to engage me. I guess I was trying to like wrap my mind around like uh, what you were saying. So I'm sorry if I was being no, a little no, 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 no. I was just trying so... to let it settle in a little bit. I, I, I think I was having a hard time connecting with your message or your question because I never evaluated myself in a spiritual aspect before like that. So for me, everything is so objective, mm-hmm. you know? So if I was believing something or I matured and learned it, you know, or and some insecurity or something like that. I just always look at it from a very objective, mature as I am at that point in my life kind of point of view. So I was just having a hard time connect. So I, just, I don't want you to think I was no, right. disregarding what you were saying. As you might a, be further ahead than you think you are, you know. You, you sure don't sounds have, like it. Sometimes, I mean, I, I don't honestly like to be around religious people, if I can just be honest. I don't like to be around yeah. religious people. Yeah. <laughs> Can I throw something a little about there? I've been sitting yeah. here mulling about this. So this article, I, I kind of had a little bit of the BS detector going off too. I'm really actually really conflicted about it because 
number one i really i respect the atlantic as a source i feel like they do some pretty you know down the middle reporting um number two just based on everything i've heard about exorcists like they're super serious people like even Mm -hmm. if you didn't think what they're doing was legitimate like if you probably talked to one you'd probably think this guy takes what he's doing pretty seriously very seriously make stuff up on the other hand though i really worry when something like this comes out that it feeds the persecution complex um because there's a whole host of stuff where like i don't want everybody to think that it's the devil that's messing them up when it really might just be a circumstance in their life or them being a jerk right yeah um one really good example and, and i feel like the the persecution complex is actually the bigger route in which the devil is creeping into the lives of Christians in particular to take them apart from God. Like if there's a few people who are getting directly attacked by the dynamic in a way that an exorcist can help, there's a whole host of people who are feeling like they are being especially persecuted when maybe they're not, that is actually driving them away from God or maybe more particular driving them away from being the kind of people that would attract other people towards God. Mm. I mean, just to play devil's advocate, yeah, but I'm full. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what if... Jokes. Uh, <laughs> we have fun jokes, here. I mean, jokes, jokes, the, jokes. the amount of... <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. Jokes, jokes, jokes. <laughs> the, the amount of exorcists that in, increased was not just the United States. Culturally, I could understand that if it was, say, a country, but that's not true. Globally exorcism has increased and culturally that's significant because there is such a diversity in cultural opinion of what that means i mean even in places as diverse as like say the czech republic which is predominantly atheist um you see a large increase so it, it's not just the united states so i i could definitely see that especially in the united states because there are a bunch of we're a bunch of pansies who could definitely do the victim thing, right? So, <laughs> wow. but but globally, it it has I mean three hundred percent increased according to the, the international statistics on exorcism. I, I think so, it depends. Like I was trying to figure out. So the two statistics I, ta- I saw in there, I don't mean to go keep going on about statistics, but I love statistics. I saw <laughs> seventeen hundred exorcisms in what Indianapolis, or yeah. no, sorry, sorry, seventeen hundred calls to an exorcist, which we already kind of established. You know, there's a there's a very narrow sales funnel for exorcism, very narrow, very or a very very small <laughs> fraction become actual exorcisms. Mm-hmm. And then we also saw a vast increase in the number of exorcists being employed, which I guess could technically mean a lot of them are answering phone calls mostly. I don't know. They have assistants. Uh huh. Oh, hopefully, assistants. Yes. Um, I the guess I w- keepers. I guess I would say that though too. That actually, a lot of these trends that are are maybe yeah you know just generically messing us up are are worldwide i mean eastern europe is a hotbed hot a hotbed for white ethno nationalism um so bread? If, hot bread hot I'm bread wondering. hot bread would be great right now and especially <laughs> to soak up all this alcohol which yeah, is right? causing me to slur my speech <laughs> <laughs> oh believe me my friend oh. we've been in way worse circumstances <laughs> we've been way we've worse we've been arguing with each way other slurring our words yelling <laughs> <laughs> so don't feel this bad. is quite tame right now yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, th- I, I hear what you're saying i think i think um Exor- you know, all this talk of demonic possession and stuff, it, it's alluring to people who might have other issues because if they were possessed, it would take um, responsibility off of them. Or, you know, they wouldn't. Um, but so I understand. I, 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 under- so. I, I get it why people are like, oh, you know, they're so into it, you know? And so I can- also get why it's whittled down to like. So can not I, ever. Yeah, go can, ahead. Can I dial back on that because that's it's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. You cause the possession because most possessions take place through your sin, and so actually mm. you are bringing the possession upon yourself by continuing in your sin. So it doesn't take the blame off of you. If anything, it incriminates uh, you. Well, that's yeah, that's true. How many I, gay people have been possessed? Actually, I don't know. As far as I know, not that, not that many. Is it a lot? Not that many, as far as I know. Because I was just saying, like, I mean, they're just day in, day out sinning. No. Like actually, every second of every day. But sinning most, doesn't necessarily mean no. demonic activity. 
Uh, I'm just saying, like, when uh, the higher, the more you sin, the more likely you are to be possessed. Doesn't it seem like it's always, like, innocent people, at least on movies and stuff like that? Like, I don't know, but it also seems like it's innocent people who experience, like, miraculous things. and Or, or sometimes it's random. Sometimes it's people true. who are actually doing really bad things. Yeah. There's someone like named Saul. Bartolo Longo, who was a satanic <laughs> priest. <laughs> Who's well, now a Catholic, like a saint in the Catholic Church? Yeah. Um, Paul was like a murderer. Saint yeah, Paul, but you know, but that's like, a little different though, because if you take if you take Saul, who became Paul, if you take his story, he was actually a very pious Jew, because the only reason he was persecuting the church was because he felt so passionately about the church. So in his in his defense, he was doing what he thought was the most absolute right thing to do. Yeah. And, and sacrificing everything for that. So it was bad, but it, in his mindset, it was actually the best thing to do. And you're right, because almost every instance of Our Lady appearing in the modern times has almost always been as somebody either innocent or a child. Hmm. Huh. So. Yeah. I, I think what I appreciate the most is the, the acknowledgement I think from both sides saying that um, maybe we're dealing with some of the same things and we have different names for these things. And we're, we're actually beginning to find out that we might have more common ground in dealing with, you know, the human soul and the psyche uh, than we realize, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, this is where I have to applaud them. The, uh, the priest will defer Every time when people come to them and they'll say, nope, you have to go see a therapist. Nope, got to go, gotta go see a doctor. So the good thing about the, about the exorcists is they will defer every time. And until you've gone to see every professional, they won't see you. So yeah. that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they may see you on like a spiritual director basis or a... To pray with Your you, but not will. for purposes but of the a exorcist is not exorcist. You. Perform ex right. exorcist yeah. services. Right, oh, they will you. not do their exorcist duties. Yeah, it'd be very uh, Scientology. -esque they also, they I mean, they also are priests, so they may meet with you on that.